welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get this video out on time, but I still wanted to make an astronomy year in review video about 2025 because it was so memorable. But first I'll start with some losses in the astronomy world in 2025. We lost a giant in eclipse prediction and outreach, Fred Espinak. He was known to amateur astronomers as Mr. Eclipse. Mr. Espinak passed away from cancer on June 1st, 2025 at age 71, but he left behind decades of eclipse data, sky calendars, and his passion for sharing eclipse events with the public. We also lost Commander Jim Lovell of the ill-fated Apollo 13 mission. He died at age 97. He's who famously said, hey, uh, we've had a problem here. He survived that mission, but he passed away in 2025. And we also lost a giant in the telescope eyepiece world when Al Nagler, founder of Teleview Eyepieces, passed away at work on October 27th, 2025. He was 90 years old. Rest in peace, Al Nagler, Jim Lovell, and Fred Espinak. Fred Espinak helped me immensely with his detailed charts of the eclipse paths for 2024 and well into the future. Now for all the exciting astronomy events of 2025. Probably the most talked about astronomy event of 2025 was undoubtedly 3I Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar visitor to enter our solar system. It was discovered early July 2025 by the Atlas Survey, the same system that found its predecessors. 3I Atlas reached perihelion, or its closest approach to the Sun, October 30th. But it was being tracked during that time by spacecraft and cameras. But it became observable to amateur telescopes on Earth by November and into December. Although this comet was too faint for naked eye, it was visible in even modest-sized telescopes from Earth, and many amateurs were able to see it with their telescopes and also to get photos from their backyards in both hemispheres. That's a rare opportunity to photograph and actually see an interstellar visitor in real time. Professional observatories like the Hubble Space Telescope and NASA missions like SphereX also captured it, and this helped scientists refine its size, its composition, and the coma's behavior. And this was information that would have been unimaginable a decade ago. For many of us with backyard telescopes, seeing 3 i Atlas was the story of the year, a once-in-a-generation chance to track something born outside of our solar system. And speaking of comets, 2025 delivered some truly magical moments for observers. More than once in 2025, amateur astronomers, such as myself, were able to see three comets in the same night <laughs> through backyard telescopes. That trio included Comet C 2025A6 Lemon, which became bright enough to see naked eye. I saw it in October from a dark sky site in Utah, and that was super exciting. It's not often you get to see naked eye comets. It wasn't as exciting as 2024's Zhen Chan Atlas, but still very memorable, especially when it occurred on the same night <laughs> that I saw Comet C 2025 R2 Swan, a long period comet visible in small telescopes through much of the fall. And if you saw Comet Lemon and Comet Swan and you stayed up late enough and got lucky enough, you could also see Comet 3i Atlas, the interstellar visitor, visible all in the same night in the autumn of 2025. Pretty cool. For many sky watchers with telescopes or binoculars, nights with three comets above the horizon were one of the most memorable observational experiences of the decade. Also in 2025, Saturn's rings became edge-on, 
in May and nearly edge on during the year. And this is something that Saturn does every 15 years. Because the rings were nearly edge on, it allowed amateur astronomers a chance to glimpse transits of some of Saturn's moons, mostly Titan, but also Rheus and Tethys and Enceladus across Saturn's disk. I've seen many transits on Jupiter, but this was my first time to see a transit on Saturn. I saw it in October and it was Titan. It was wonderful to watch it and it won't happen again for another 15 years. I hope you caught that. There was a total lunar eclipse in March 2025, but it was cloudy where I was observing and I missed that. And I also missed the Perseid meteor shower due to clouds. But I saw a spectacular Geminid meteor shower display on an incredibly clear night in mid-December. And finally, the other big astronomy event of 2025 was the G4 geomagnetic storm on November 11th that caused aurora displays all over the world, with the aurora borealis seen as far south as Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Texas. I was in Montana at 45 degrees latitude at that time. We get aurorae there from time to time, especially during this period of solar maximum. But that night, for me, it really put on a show with all the colors and especially dominant was red aurora. Finally, the year ended with the sad event, the Lick Observatory, which is east of San Jose, California, and houses the 36 inch Alvin Clark refractor, at one time the largest refractor in the world until they built the 40 inch refractor at Yerkes in Wisconsin, sustained significant damage to the observatory roof Christmas night when there were 114 mile per hour winds on Mount Hamilton. Fortunately, the refractor wasn't damaged, but this is the most damage that the Lick Observatory has ever experienced in its 150 year existence. It's operated by UC Berkeley and they hope to get it fixed within nine months. I sure hope so because I was planning to buy tickets to tour the Lick Observatory in 2026. Oh well, I'll be very busy in 2026 because although we didn't get a total solar eclipse in 2025, there will be one in August 2026 in Spain. Well, that's my 2025 Astronomy Year in Review. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. Thank you.